or just you know Baker Bible Atlas. Don't leave home without it. You know, the one that I have is edited by Charles Pfeiffer. Anytime that guy's name's on something, unless it's dealing with the plan of salvation, uh, you know, he's good. He's uh, got several books out. You would not go wrong doing his. A couple that I have. We were just I was just talking with Shane a while ago. This is uh, this Bible Maps insert. It's just a micro version of the, the bigger one, which I have. And I bought this, well, and it's at home in my CD-ROM. But it comes with a CD, too, that has all the photos and everything that you can uh, put on your computer, look at your computer, and so forth. So, uh, you know, it's not a bad price, either. can't remember what I... I just copy and paste, but uh, you had them, but you didn't. You ever take philosophy? No. Tyndale, same thing. Got a CD-ROM that comes with it. All the photos, and this has got it's Buku charts and stuff too. You know, uh, if you've got the money and the time, you know uh, they're real nice to have. Also, uh, you'll see some photos if I can remember. Let me run down here real quick and see if I can see. Uh, man, what did I just do? There we go. Okay. Uh, when From time to time, when you see these images right here, this was, uh, believe it or not, I helped the guy design. I, I didn't help him design or anything. But the fellow that made it, he needed people to run tests on it. 20, I miss this, probably 30 years ago. And so I had a certain section I had to go through, you know, and tell him what kind of glitches or whatever it was. So if you see this kind of a look, that's a Bible charts. And I used to think it was the coolest thing because on Paul's missionary journeys, uh, you know, in his trip to Rome, it had a little ship and it would actually crash, you know, and sink in the ocean. It was animated, you know, and I just thought that was the neatest thing in the world. But uh, that's a decent little program, too. So... If you ever want to get have opportunity, but that's just some things that uh, you know can make uh, life a little easier. Oh, I don't know why it does goes right to that. This, of course, is our Bible geography class tonight. We're going to be looking at uh, the face of the land, so forth, and seas. We said that geography uh, comes from a couple of words: gay for earth and uh, graphos to write. So it's to write about the earth, and this is to look at both. Human culture, some people look at during this class, and the physical, we're going to stick basically with the Bible lands. And remember we said that this began, the Bible lands we're going to be talking about start from Italy and run all the way across to the Persian Gulf, and I couldn't even get it on the same thing. This distance, remember how far that was? 2,200 miles, outstanding. And then there's Mount Ariat up in this area here down to Mount Sinai. And how long did we say this was? About 900 miles. That's exactly right. And so that's the Bible lands, and that's what we're going to be uh, concentrating on. This right here is how your book, our book, begins. This is something that I would be familiar with. Okay, I'm just going to tell you now. This is something that you will need to know. Don't freak out. We're going to go over it enough that... Uh, and I like this one because the colors were a little bit more, you know, black and white's just tough, you know, on your uh, thing here. But uh, I like to use like uh, uh, A-N-Z-I, you know, ANZI is an acronym. And I was, I was in the Army and everything's an acronym, you know. That's how they would teach us people who had no memories how to remember things. And so, uh, you know, even just little bitty things. But... If you can, and this is how I would start off. I'd start off with what we call the Transjordanic tribes, two and a half of them, right? And you've got Reuben, Gad, Manasseh, all right? There, you know, you're, you're two and a half down of the 12. You know that Jerusalem is in Judah, so you got a real good idea. This is Judah. Simeon is, Simeon is in the middle of Judah. Benjamin, remember when the southern kingdom, northern kingdom split, Benjamin goes with... Uh, Judah, so right now you're halfway through the you know 12 tribes and where they were located. Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you a map that's uh, not going to be color-coded, but it's going to have these different areas blocked off. And then if you just by some chance can remember that A-N-Z-I, you know, you've got Asher, Naphtali, Zebulun, Essachar. Uh, that's about as, you know, this right here is going to be about as involved as I'm going to ask you to be. 
And we're going to throw the six cities of refuge in, too, when we get there. Three on one side, three on the other side of the Jordan. Uh, so we will look at that. So this is something on page uh, 47, you know, that you're going to need to uh, be somewhat. That's the wrong one. I'm sorry, not 47. It's actually on 15, 15, page 15. That's, uh, you're, you're going to need to know that. Uh, it'd be good to know about Edom and Moab and Ammon. That's because they're just in the Bible so much. Philistia as well. You know, you're going to you hear that a lot. And so uh, that'd be good to know, but you've got a few weeks yet. And uh, you're going to learn more by accident in here than you will from, from uh, taking tests and so forth. The land of Palestine, of course, this is, begins uh, on page, what is that, 16. And what I've done, simply just 17, just... Uh, well, I'll tell you something that's interesting. Me and Brother Holman and a couple were talking before we started on page 16 there. And we're going to talk about Lake Hula tonight. But Lake Hula doesn't really even exist anymore. That thing has been drained. Uh, apparently, you know, uh, I guess they probably needed the water too. But it was uh, not a very deep lake. It was mostly like marsh. And so there were a lot of uh, bug problems, things like that. It was more of a nuisance than it was a... Uh, help with the area, and it was uh, the point where they could do that. So, uh, you know, that's not even really, uh, you know, uh, a thing anymore. So, uh, just uh, this is a pretty good map, too. I like those rivers, and uh, but uh, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about those. But notice with me, if you will, the Bible land bounded on the east by the Jordan River. That's uh, as far as right as we're, you know, uh, and then uh, the Mediterranean on the west. And then you notice the Lebanon Mountains formed the northern boundary of Canaan. And desert bordered it on the south. So you have the Lebanon Mountains. We're going to be up here. And we're going to be talking about those more when we talk about mountains here in just a moment. And then you have this desert. Well, you know, that don't show up near as well. I'd probably done better with black there. When I, but that's, that's the desert area that, uh, you know, is the south of that. And that's, nobody really goes there. You know, there's not much there. That's where the children of Israel, if you remember, uh, Mount Sinai <coughs> is down here in this peninsula. Remember the Gulf of uh, Suez and the Gulf of Aqaba and the Red Sea is here and then here the Suez Canal. So that's why you probably know that or be more familiar with that than uh, the name than you would the others. And so as we continue reading, the name Palestine is said to have come from the phrase Philistine land. And Palestine includes land on both sides of the Jordan River. And that's you know, something you're going to, we'll be talking about here in a little bit in our questions. Uh, it contains an area on both sides. And so this whole area here would be considered Palestine, whereas Canaan would just be on this side. And that's going to be important because we're going to look at that in a moment. So what we're going to do, going to kind of blow this map up a little bit. You know, I just thought that would be crisper, uh, show up better. I guess, uh, but this uh, top point here, we're going to blow that up, and you'll see that's called the Leontes or Leontes River, and uh, that's going to be like the northern extreme. You're going to have these mountains too that we'll talk about here in a moment. That's going to form the northern part of what we'd say that's where Palestine ends. It's kind of like over in Squatchy Valley, you know, when you get to the Cumberland Plateau, you're done. You know, that's the same thing there. Mount Hermon, of course, right here is a part of these mountains right here, Lebanon Mountains, and then there's the river we were just talking about. So that's your northern extremity. And then uh, these being the limit, Le uh, Lebanon Mountains, and there's two mountain ranges. And you have this valley in between, and one's just called Lebanon, and the other one, Lebanon Mountains, the other one just anti or against or over the side. Uh, the other one in the valley in between. And so that's what forms the northern part. And then down at the south, you'll have the River of Egypt. Now, don't let that confuse you. When somebody says River of Egypt, you know what I think. Well, the Nile, right? But this is actually a different river, and it's not the Nile River. It is the River of Egypt. It's also called Wadi El Arish, if you try to find that today, as I spent several hours trying to, well, not several hours, but it took me a lot longer than I wished trying to figure out where that place was because they don't even call it that uh, anymore. So as we continue to read, you have the Lebanon Mountains to the north. You have uh, <clears throat> Palestine bounded the Syrian desert on the south, bordered by the river Egypt. And of course, we say not the Nile. And of course, the Mediterranean is going to form the uh, 
western boundary. Palestine's about one-fourth of the size of Pennsylvania, or about 12,000 square miles. And if you can see this orange up here, that showed up pretty decently, that is the area that King Saul uh, basically had his hand on, you know, that he, he ruled over. That's going to be greatly enlarged uh, during David. David is going to expand that thing out even further. And so uh, keep that in mind. Uh, you know, the biggest it's going to get is during the time of David and then Solomon. Uh, but, you know, David is the one that's going to be actually, uh, well, he's really going to be whooping some head when it comes to uh, uh, Edom, the Moabites, the Ammonites, this area here. He just basically subdues those. You know, one of the pictures I remember, do you remember when David, I'm not sure which one of these kingdoms, we'll have to talk about it later, but he lays the men down and kills every other one, you know? And uh, just to thread out the, you know, the population. And I thought, man, you know, that'd be a day you'd want to be in the right spot if there ever was a day. And, uh, you know, he put them uh, under uh, submission. So as we continue uh, leading around, reading on, the coastal plain. Now, uh, coastal plains, uh, if you've ever been down to Savannah, Georgia, you know, but believe it or not, we're still considered to be a part of the coastal plain. Uh, even in our area, north uh, North New England, up in that area, the north, uh, the seaboard up there, that's considered coastal plain. Florida, Georgia, North and South Carolina, that would be a coastal plain where you're not way real high above sea level and farming is pretty good and so forth. But the coastal plain says along the Mediterranean, uh, you don't have a whole lot of area there. And uh, you know, if you've heard Jesus, Rose of Sharon, this uh, area right here, now keep in mind, as this is not the easiest thing to see, this is the Dead Sea, and then here is the Sea of Galilee, or Sea of Tiberias, and so Mount Carmel right here, and then right below that you have two different plains here. One is the uh, Plain of Sharon, and this other one is going to be the Plain of Philistia, and it's a highway. That's where everybody cruises through. Uh, we're going to get to this in a moment, but here you have these, uh, these are mountains. Start out small, get bigger, and uh, that's where Israel, that's where the Israelites live. And so when you've got the Egyptian king wanting to go up there and try to whoop the Assyrian king, you know, and uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Babylonian king, you've got, you know, the king of Israel, Judah, excuse me, uh, good King Josiah goes out to meet him and because he needs to go through here. He's not interested in going over here. He don't want to fool with Jerusalem. And, uh, but that's where everybody went. So you've got a just a highway there of uh, folks that, uh, you know, and that's what kept Israel safe for the most part, God, of course, but also that, you know, it just, there wasn't anything, you know, you, when you're trying to take over an area, you've got to risk, you know, the cost effect, you know. Uh, if you remember when Nebuchadnezzar was trying to take uh, Tyre, you know, what he what he do? He took over the one part of God, and there they were out there on the island. He said, hey, forget it, you know, and left. You know, Alexander the Great would uh, take it up later, but it just wasn't cost effective. He'd already been there forever and uh, didn't even have the money to feed his, uh, pay his army afterwards. So, you know, to go up in those hill countries, we'll, we'll talk about those mountains. You're talking about getting uh, in, in some pretty high stuff. Uh, also, this Valley of Jezreel, <laughs> this <laughs> Valley of Jezreel, it's right by Megiddo. And when you think of that word Megiddo, what pops in your head? Armageddon, there we go. And I'm not talking about the one Def Leppard sang about. But uh, you've got Megiddo here, and that's going to be this little valley right here is where uh, so many people now have about 200 million men going to throw down in that little old valley right there. And uh, you can't fit them in there. You'd have to stack them in there like cordwood. And then, of course, you know guns. Well, you can't have people with guns in there because, I mean, well, they'd shoot each other before they could even get close. And so that's why Hal Lindsey and those guys would have uh, metallic objects won't work anymore, bombs won't fire, and that's why we need horses and uh, get out the switchblades again. <laughs> you know, I mean, just make it up as you go, right? Uh, personally, I just think I'll take a ray gun and just wipe them all out. But that's not going to happen. You couldn't get them in there. It's just, it's just false doctrine. But anyway, that's where it is. And... Why does the Bible use that? Why does John say, why does he use Megiddo, the Valley of Megiddo, Armageddon? Why does he use that? What have they been doing there since you had 20 guys up here and 20 guys down here? 
<laughs> fighting. That's all it's ever been. It's a battlefield. And, uh, you know, you, you dig deep enough, you're going to find some bones. You dig deeper, you're going to find more bones because men have been killing each other in that valley for as long as men have been around in number. And so that's what John's talking about. He's using a place that's, uh, you know, totally, everybody understands that there's a place of conflict. Well, anyway, there's your, uh, the coast was called the Plain of Esdraelon or Valley of Jezreel to me is a whole lot easier to say. Next, we go to what's called the Low Hills or Shefla. And uh, it is uh, an area right here <clears throat> starting to go up in elevation. But you can hopefully kind of see this mountain range here. And that is going to be, you got Bethlehem, Jerusalem. They're over here in these mountains. And this is an area too. It's like a buffer. You've got this, it's a, it's still pretty get around in it, uh, but it acts as a buffer. The term Shephelah means lowland. It's in the Hebrew Bible 20 times. Uh, it starts from Gezer in the north to Beersheba in the south, about 27 miles long, about 10 miles wide. That's another thing. When you're looking at the Bible lands, try to remember the area you're talking about is pretty small. <laughs> you're, you know, you're, it's, not a, it's not a huge area, and man... That's why I think if you went over there, you'd probably need a month just to try to see some things because you could probably spend a couple days just in a small area with just all the things that are mentioned, you know, in, in the Bible. And so it's kind of called the, the hill country, the buffer zone. And as we go back to it, uh, this uh, Beersheba, uh, mostly though, let's see, Ashkelon, Ashdod, these uh, Philistine cities over here, you'll find cities here, they're constantly changing hands. When Israel finally, you know, gets the, the promised land and conquers that, they're always having battles with the, the Philistines uh, in this area right here. And when the Philistines are stronger, they have all these areas. And uh, when the Israelites are stronger, they have these areas. It, it kind of swaps back and forth. And most of the time, though, it has to do with uh, Israel's faithfulness uh, to God, keeping those Philistines out of there. And so you can see that natural kind of buffer that uh, the lowlands to the mountains. Then the nation of Israel, the Philistines are stronger. Of course, they had it, the central range between the low hills and the Jordan River Valley. Uh, these mountains were the primary dwelling place. And notice the notice this difference here. Uh, they vary in height from 1,800 to 4,000 feet. We used to live on a ridge, <clears throat> or I don't know what you call it, it's even as much as a ridge. But it's right on the mountain above Dunlap on the uh, the Saudi Daisy side. Uh, it's, you know, y'all ever heard of, uh, I can't even remember where I live now. Isn't that sad? It hadn't been that long ago. Uh, no, thanks though. <laughs> I still remember that one pretty good. Uh, Lewis Chapel, thank you. Lived on Lewis Chapel. And Lewis, th that side of the mountain is, it's 2,200 feet elevation. And uh, then we lived on a little ridge on top of that mountain. And so sometimes we'd come off that thing and it'd be snowing like everything on our little ridge, not too bad on top of the mountain, and then not even raining good. By the time you got the elevation, 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 it means things. It, it's real important. We don't think about that a whole lot, but I think uh, we probably do in this area more than a lot of folks. Uh, I remember I used to hate them kids on Lookout Mountain. I, lived, I went to school in Rossville, and uh, we're Walker County. Well, you have a bunch of Walker County people who live on that mountain. I mean, every time it looked like the wind was going to blow, they'd call school off of them. We had to go. Y'all know how it is. Bledsoe County, they call off school if it's going to be over five miles an hour in, in wind. I tell you, I don't even know how they get to school or, or get a school year in. So everybody wants to go to school in Bledsoe County. Well, the, the central range uh, we talked about, it's the, hopefully you can see it's, it, it's this here. Right on the before you start going down into the Jordan River Valley, and that's where everybody lives for the most part. <clears throat> then we're going to look at what's called the uh, Negeb, the Negeb Desert Country. It's down here, and uh, these uh, these are uh, the names they use now, so they're kind of not what we call. It. It's called the Negev. We call it the Negeb. And here you see this is uh, what do they call it? Be'er Shiva, Shiva. And, of course, we call it Beersheba. Uh, Shiva, of course, is the Hebrew uh, term for that. And that's the lowest, the farthest south uh, city that you're going to find 
uh, that's you know associated with the Bible lands. And that's where Abimelech and Abraham make a covenant in Beersheba. Uh, and they both swore an oath there, of course. And that's the uh, lowest part we're going to get. You have the Jordan River Valley, which is, uh, man, you can't see nothing on that. Well, on my screen, it's real pretty. But anyway, it's uh, real green right here, real green and lush. And, of course, the mountaintops are a lot browner. Uh, this is where, you know, uh, you wanted to live if you was a farmer or had uh, cattle. Sorry it didn't show up too good. You know, when you think about the Jordan River, I always see pictures where it looks like you could jump across it. You know, but there are parts of it that are quite wide. It's kind of like the Tennessee River, you know, how we've dammed it up in some places. you got the Nickajack, the Chickamauga. You can't see that very good either. But here, I hopefully you get an idea. This is part of the Jordan River on, of course, the south side of the Sea of, sea, you know, the sea of Galilee. To, and our book even says that some places it's up to 12 miles in width. Um, so, um, you know, one of these days, you know, it'd be great to be able to see that. But I don't think that's going to happen. Then the next body of water we're going to talk about is Lake Hula. And, of course, this is uh, it's way up here. Remember I told you if you wanted to, and I would, at some point we're going to do that. Not tonight because we're going to do a little something different. But this right here, you got three bodies of water, a little one right here, an upside down pair here, or the shape of a lyre, a harp. And then, of course, you have the Jordan River runs down to a bigger body of water. You come out right beside the Sea of Galilee, put a little thumb on your uh, area there. You have Mount Carmel. That's the Mediterranean Sea, and bang. You know, you've pretty much got a working map of the Holy Land. Uh, say holy, I shouldn't say the Bible land. And then right out by the Dead Sea, just come out the top of it a little bit, make you a star, and you've got Jerusalem. Bethlehem, of course, would be a little bit below it. And you're well on your way to having a really decent uh, map. But notice Lake Hula here. Most of it was swamps. They have drained that. That's that little piece of water up there. And so uh, it's even, try to find pictures of it. It's kind of interesting when you do Google searches. Uh, so Lake Hula is one of the bodies of water. The next one we see, of course, is the Sea of Galilee. Uh, this is prominent in our minds. And notice also that the brother's going to give us the three names that uh, are going to come up again. Notice it's Chenereth, Gennesareth, and Tiberias, Sea of Tiberias. Three names that it goes with other than Sea of Galilee. That's just common. You're going to find that in Bible lands because you're studying a land that has been occupied by a lot of different people and they change the names of it. Uh, it just happens. And so don't get too frustrated with that. I know sometimes you read the Bible, especially you know if you hadn't been studying it a long time and you read about one place and you're like, well, how can that be? The, and you find out you're talking about the same place. So don't get, don't get frustrated with that. Just, uh, just learn. Another thing, when you're talking about you know, Jerusalem being right out here, you know, uh, you, know you kind of think maybe you could uh, be at the Dead Sea and look over there and there's Jerusalem. Well, it's not that way. It's, it's way up up mountains and so forth. But right above it and slightly to the right is Jericho. And, of course, that's firmly on our minds because the children of Israel are over here, and that's where they're going to cross to go over and, of course, start the conquest of the land of Canaan. All right, let's go ahead and move on. We're talking about the Dead Sea. <clears throat> the Dead Sea, also known as the Salt Sea, 1,300 feet. So if you... <laughs> We're at the ocean, and you just started digging. You'd have to dig 1,300 feet to get to a point where you could say, okay, we're at the same level now as the dead. Would that work? No, because you got down so far, you'd be hitting water, right? But, uh, and then it's 1,300 feet deep in some places. Uh, got a guy that does tending at South Pittsburgh now. He used to, was activated. It's been about seven or eight months, you know, over in uh, the, that area with the armed services. And that's the only place he went. <laughs> of all the places. Man, you had to drive by some really cool places. He said, man, I only had six hours or whatever it was. So he wanted to go, and he wanted to go float in, in the Dead Sea. And I thought, well, you know, I guess that's cool. But uh, that's the Dead Sea. Next, we're going to talk about the mountains. And we start out with uh, places that, uh, you know, we see Bible stories. And, and it don't, first of all, some people would say that, you know, this is a lack of, uh, you know, the Bible just isn't inspired because they don't even know north from south. Well, they weren't concerned with north and south near as much as they were up or down, uphill or downhill. And I mean, 4,000 feet, folks, uh, that's, that's a long ways, you know. And so in Luke 10, at verse 30, Jesus answered, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Well, here's a breakdown. Boy, this is a lot clearer on mine. 
But you get that. There's the Dead Sea. And Jericho is, is here, and Jerusalem is up here. So <laughs> if you're telling somebody about going from Jericho to Jerusalem, you're going to say, well, it's north a little bit. Uh, you know, you ought to see it, though. It ain't bad, you know. But, <laughs> you know, no, you'd say, that's a climb. <laughs> you, you heading up, you know. Be sure, and uh, or if you're coming down, you know, make sure you got brakes on that thing. But uh, it's uh, eight. Jericho is 825 feet below sea level, whereas Jerusalem is about 2,500 above. So that's a huge, huge uh, difference there. And so that's why they were more concerned with that. So first thing we're going to start off though, the Lebanon Mountains, uh, two mountain ranges side by side and north of Canaan. Mount Hermon is one peak in these mountains, so it's part of that mountain range, just like we're going to look at a little bit later. Pisgah is actually the Hebrew word for summit, and so when you talk about Mount Nebo, and then he, he going up Mount Nebo, and then he's at Mount Pisgah, and you're like, well, where did he leave? You know, did he go? In the, you no, know, it's just a peak uh, of it, you know. But anyway, uh, these mountains, of course, we've already looked. Uh, that's where they would be located if you looked at the, the big the big picture. And they're about as far north as we're going to concern ourselves with, with. Mount Zion, of course, is something that really we're all familiar with. That's in the Bible, you know. Isaiah chapter 2, that's where the word of the Lord is going to go forth from. What is it, Mount Zion? What's the most significant thing there? It's pointing towards it. Starts with a J, big long word. Jerusalem, yes, that's what's on our mind. Because uh, that's, you know, where uh, the temple is going to be built. That's where uh, the Christ is going to be uh, crucified. And there's a lot of things. Uh, Mount Zion, that just, that's in our, we sing songs. Oh, Zion, you know, uh, talking about this uh, area. It's changed a lot. Uh, it's like everything over there. Uh, during David's time, it was uh, just, you know, kind of small. Uh, he uh, took it over. It's going to be his capital. And, of course, during the time of Solomon, he's building things onto it. And nowadays, you know, uh, it's hardly even recognizable with all this other stuff. And, of course, that right there is the Temple Mount. What is sitting there today? <coughs> yeah. <coughs> the Dome of the Rock. Uh, that's, that's absolutely amazing how all that has changed. Uh, just have, yeah, we won't spend a lot of time with that, but that's uh, it's changed a lot. So don't uh, you know? Don't get frustrated when you see. If you've got one of those overlay maps, you know you'll probably have three different ones for Jerusalem. They'll try to give you you know ancient times, then they'll try to give you time of David, then they'll try to give you time of Christ, and they'll give you the modern version, in which it's cut up like an apple pie, and you've got you know your Christian sect, you've got your uh, Islamic uh, area, and you've got your uh, the Jewish, Jew, Jewish area, and, uh, you know, it's something. If you ever do any kind of Google searches on tombs and stuff like that, uh, to see those tombs, you know, you'd think, man, that's cool. Well, you turn them on, and it looks like a jail because it's all walled in, and across the top of most of the walls, Constantina wire, or razor wire, and out front, you've got gates, you know, where there are soldiers standing there, and they don't have slingshots. You know, they're carrying automatic weapons. And, uh, you know, people have got a real gun problem in the United States. You know, they're saying guns, this, guns, that. Man, when I was in Germany 40, 30 years ago, however long ago that was, them cops was walking around with Uzis. <laughs> you know, they had big German shepherds and Uzis. And I was like, boy, y'all wouldn't have liked that at all. Uh, different world, but it's uh, it's pretty pretty messed up over there. The next one we're going to talk about is Mount Nebo. Uh, this is where Moses, of course, would go up. And, of course, you can... Hopefully, I've got an arrow draw to it. Nebo's 12 miles east of the mouth of the Dead Sea, where Moses died, was buried by God. Deuteronomy 32, 49 says, Get thee up into this mountain, Abram, unto Mount Nebo, Mount Erebon, excuse me, unto Mount Nebo, which is in the land of Moab. This is over against Jericho. And behold, the land of Canaan, which I gave to the children of Israel for a possession. He goes up that mountain, the mountain of Nebo, Nebo, a false god, kind of like uh, when... Uh, uh, Baal is cursing Israel. You know, he went up into Peor. Uh, these are false deities. And so uh, that's what they called that mountain. And he goes up to the top of Pisgah. Well, that's why Mount Nebo is important for us. And of course, it's going to be on the other side of the Jordan, right? Because this is where Israel's going. This is where they are. 
And who can't go with them? Moses. You remember why Moses can't go? You know? You know, that's uh, that's always made an impression on me. I was in a band. I was in what's called the persecution section. Uh, some people call it percussion. But I was a dumber. And, uh, you know, we struck things. <laughs> you know, and so sometimes I'd like to tell people that, you know, there's a situation where God had a difference between uh, speaking something or playing something or beating something or, you know, uh, Moses struck that instead of talking to it like he was supposed to. There's a difference. Uh, you know, because we had a congregation uh, between Nashville and, and us years ago. Remember the white when it first, you know, I, nobody has said anything about it now. But Otter Creek, I believe, was the name of it. And believe it or not, the old West End Church of Christ there in West End, Nashville, is now a uh, satellite of that. Of that uh, it's, it's Anyway, they would uh, take, the uh, reason I bring this up, they didn't want to use the instrument when singing praises to God, or worshiping God, excuse me. And they had a difference between praise songs and worship songs. Now, when they was praising, I mean, everybody's getting it. Electric guitars, bass, drums, you know. But when they'd sing their worship song, you just got a rim shot on the snare. You know, and I always want to say, you know, that kept Moses out of the promised land. But uh, that was their difference between praise songs and worship songs. Of course, there's no difference. How can you sing a praise song like, you know, I love the Lord, that not be worship? You know, it just absolutely amazing to me. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, the next one we're going to look at, <clears throat> of course, is Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel is going to be that little thumb that we stick out there. One of the, I tell you what, one of the stories from as early as I can remember that always just pressed upon me, uh, I thought so much of that that uh, I had to wrestle with my wife. Luckily, she didn't, uh, I weigh more than her. But uh, when we were naming my kid, uh, my son, named him Elijah, uh, his, even, his name, God, is Jehovah. And what was he doing? He was fighting against a bunch of pagans. Even his very name would have ticked him off. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and what did he do? Defeated 450 prophets of Baal there after three years plus of, uh, of a drought. And that is where it took place. And then, of course, he uh, goes off. And, you, you know, and I always try to use him when I'm having a pity party or not feeling good. Uh, Elijah thought he'd been whooped, didn't he? They're not even worth living anymore. And what did God say? Why are you here? Get up. I got some things for you to be doing. You got business to take care of. Why are you sitting here all feeling bad about it? You know, so sometimes when we're not feeling good, the church is going through a problem, COVID's trying to wipe us out or whatever, as far as the congregations of the Lord's people, you know, it's okay. God's got our back. We're going to be all right. There's things we need to be doing, and we need to be driving on and marching on, uh, just like Elijah. But I guess every now and then it don't hurt to have a little pity party, just to make you feel better, you know. My wife, she gives me about 15 to 20 minutes, and then I've got to get over mine. So uh, Mount Carmel, like a thumb in the sea, rises 500 feet, and it's what the, you know starts that plain. If you see that thing, it's you know part of it's really high, but the part down to the to the sea. It's just 500 feet, but it's like a big rocky thing sticking out. I just couldn't uh, figure out exactly how it's situated. I was thought about putting some pictures on here, but I'm like, I, I don't really understand exactly where you're at when you're looking at it. But it's uh, like a big mountain uh, area. It goes up to 1,700 feet, but that's not right there at the sea. And, of course, that's where uh, that took place at 1 Kings 18. Then we're going to drop down to Mount, uh, Mounts Ebal and Gerizim. Uh, the Mount of Cursing and the Mount of Blessing. One of the things that can help you with this is to remember which uh, group is going to have problems first. The Northern Bunch, right? And the Mount of Cursing is Ebal, and it's north of Mount Gerizim, which is south. Uh, and they're real close together. And do you remember what took place there? Joshua's going to read the, the blessings, and he's going to read the cursings, right? And... Uh, <clears throat> He's going to read the cursings on Mount Ebal, and then he's going to read the blessings from Mount Gerizim. And you, you've you probably read uh, commentaries and stuff. I've never been there. I couldn't tell you. But uh, they say it's like a natural amphitheater that, uh, you know, you could, uh, you know, project your voice. You could be heard for uh, better than you could in most places. But why, why does get Mount Gerizim? Why does that 
stick out in our minds as New Testament uh, Bible readers? What, the, what takes place there that you just can't help but think about? Remember, John 4, that's exactly right. What does that woman say? Jesus said, that's right. He ain't your husband. And, <laughs> and you know, them other five know the fellow you're with right now. And she's like, whew, man, I got to change the subject. Uh, so she whoops out the race card, you know. She says, well, you know, you Jews, so you got to worship in Jerusalem, and we worship where? Mount Gerizim. I'd like to go there someday. I'm not, that ain't going to happen. But if I could, I'd like to go there because they have one of the oldest copies of the Old Testament, and you can go there and, and you can see it. Uh, and they'll show it to you. It ain't like so many places where, you know, it's behind. Of course, it probably is now. But back in the day, it was not. But uh, they worship there. And Jesus said, you don't know what you're doing. You know, I mean, he was kind about it. He wasn't ugly. But he says, you worship, you know what? In other words, you don't have any idea what you're doing. Y'all just created something. I guess they looked at it and said, hey, that's where the blessings are. Let's worship there. We wouldn't want to worship Mount Evil. It's pretty rough over there. So let's worship where the blessings are. So they built them a temple there 300 years before the Christ started worshiping there. And so when Jesus is talking to the woman, that's what she's talking about. Hey, we worship right here. Y'all you, say it ain't good enough. Uh, Y'all got to worship there. And of course, Jesus says, you don't know what you're doing. Salvation is of the Jews. He's not ugly about it. But he's telling her that she can do something about it, right? That she can be uh, born again. She can be saved. So <clears throat> that Mount Ebal, Hebrew word meaning rocky. And within its sides is a rather barren appearance contrasted with a lushly covered Mount Gerizim. So uh, there's a contrast just there, aren't there? And of course, we... Uh, made mention of where that was exactly. Mount Hermon stands about 9,200 feet and is on that, uh, <clears throat> it's over here, and it's on that, you know, there were two mountain ranges there. It's on the anti-Lebanon uh, mountain. So let's uh, find my my bag with my questions on it. Boy, we, we're timing this pretty good. Let's go ahead and go over these questions. All right, so which is bigger, Canaan or Palestine? That's right, because Canaan's where? It's in Palestine, right? That's like saying what's bigger, Chattanooga or Tennessee, right? What is the name of the coastal plain between Mount Carmel and the city of Joppa? Plain of Sharon, that's right. Number three, name the important plain east of Mount Carmel, that is the crossroads of the Fertile Crescent, also one of the greatest battlefields probably in, man, in man's history. Valley of Jezreel or Plain of Estradon or you can even stick that other thing in there. Number four, what is the name of the low hills between the coastal plain and the central range? Shefla, yes, yeah, right. Number five, what is the name of the southernmost city in Palestine? Beersheba. And what what we say happened there? What's the first time it's mentioned in Scripture? Remember Abraham makes covenant there, right, with the guy there about the, the well. All right, number six. It is about 120 miles from the source of the Jordan River to the Dead Sea, but how far does that water actually travel? 200 miles. That's, that goes to show you it's kind of snaky in some places, ain't it? Number seven, we said the three other names for the Sea of Galilee was Chinnereth, Gennesareth, and the Sea of Tiberias. Okay, so how far down below sea level did we say the top of the Dead Sea is? And it's how deep? Very good. Number nine, where did Elijah confront the prophets of Baal? Mount Carmel. Reminds me of an ice cream topping, doesn't it? Number ten, name the Mount of Cursing, Ebal, and the Mount of Blessing, Gerizim. And how tall is Mount Hermon? Yeah, it's almost double uh, where Jerusalem is. And then, of course, on what mountain peak did Moses die? Well, it's Nebo, but Pisgah is actually the summit. I don't know, is that a trick question? Well, anyway, if you put Nebo, you're, you're fine. If you would, take out a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper, uh, man, I hate it for you. But you need a piece of paper, especially if you're credit. Anybody need a piece of paper? Because there are actually some up here. Who uses paper anymore? Well, you can write it in your Apple Notes and email it to me, I guess. <laughs> uh, Man, I don't know how I'm going to get there from here. <clears throat> Josh, Caleb, y'all need paper? Is that what you said? Yeah? Yeah, just a piece of paper. You stick your name on it? Yeah, that's great. Just stick your name on it. Don't put no banana juice on that. 
We're going to just seven questions. All right, seven questions. <clears throat> Number one. Lamp. What is number one on? What is number one on? Very first thing we talked about. Northern River up there. Everybody's looking at me with a blank stare. Well, I tell you what. A fellow by the name of Ponce something was looking for the Fountain of Youth, okay? And I don't think that's who that river is named after, but it's real close to his last name. Remember the Conquistadores, Florida? Ponce de... What's the name of that river? Oh, that's too much of a hint. Now, come on. All right. That's number one. Number two. What is that body of water right out beside number two? Begins our little map we like to draw. Oh, don't say it out loud. This is a test of the emergency broadcast system. <laughs> But this is one time that you don't believe all you hear, okay? <laughs> all right, number three. Number three. He may have been a prophet or the son of a prophet, right? Number three, what is that body of water? It would probably help if that was blue, wouldn't it? But it ain't. It's right in the middle of a, of a lake. What is, what is that? And then, of course, number four is right on the middle of something that runs between these two bodies of water. What's the name of it? Number four, what is that right there that runs between those two bodies of water? Number five, what is that body of water? Number six, what is that? That's the only thing that is not water in what we're going to be looking at. What is that right there? Number six, what are we talking about? That thumb that sticks out into the Mediterranean. And then last but not least, what is the largest body of water associated with the Bible lands? That would be blue if I had a decent uh, map but I do not and uh, with that being said that is it do not leave here without giving me that okay or you know uh, yeah it'd be good if, I tell you what if you wouldn't mind just pass it down we'll go ahead and take those up we still have about three minutes so uh, go ahead and make sure your name's on that don't go back and grade it yourself now I've got a brand new red pen man I'm ready to break that thing in <laughs>